Alright, we are back with another painting tutorial, and today we're going to do, uh, this is a sergeant of the Cadian Shock Troops out of the Cadia Stands box set. We're going to start off, if you saw the uh, Heavy Ordnance video, we're going to start off the same way, but we're going to change it up after this first color. Uh, but we are going to use Agrax Earthshade. We're going to use it just like you would normally use a contrast paint, and just paint the uniform with this. Um, I'm going to be a little more careful than I was last time because we're going to, uh, in the Heavy Ordnance video, we used Creed Camo for the armor. Um, in this video, we're going to use Militarum Green, which is a little bit lighter. Um, and so while the Creed Camo covered over this, no problem, the Militarum Green will cover it, but it may not look as good. So I'm going to be careful around things like the knee pads and stuff. Um, but I'm just going to paint the whole uniform. Uh, I don't need to be careful around all the like pouches and leather and stuff. That's going to be a much darker leather color. So that'll be fine. But knee pads, uh, he doesn't look like he has elbow pads. Um, around his face, things like that, I will be a little more careful. So I'll, uh, I'll finish the uniform here. Uh, oh, before I continue, again, these models are brought to you by uh, a friend of mine named Connor. He's lazy and doesn't paint his own stuff, so I have to do it. But yeah, I'll uh, finish painting the uniform here, let it dry, and then we'll come back and do the next step. All right, we are back. And I've got the Militarum Green out. I've been shaking it for a while. It's one of the contrast paints that likes to separate. So uh, just got to make sure that you give it a shake when you're going to use it. And then I'm going to get my brush wet and then I'm going to start up here with the helmet or the hat I guess it's not a helmet although who knows maybe in the guard there's some some extra special padding in the helmet or in the hats to make them into helmets who knows um, and then I'm going to get the armor in here I'm going to try to get as little as possible on the belts but we are going to use a pretty dark color on the belt so, it should still cover over it. I can't tell if that's a belt or a piece of the armor. I guess it's a belt, so, oh well. I painted over the other one. I guess we'll find out how well it covers. And then I'm going to get the shoulder pad here. I might need a second coat of this, I'm not sure. We shall see. and in there. Alrighty. And I think, oh, and then the knee pads. Oh, and then I might do his cuffs in this color. I'm not really sure. Um, on this arm, he's got like a, some, I guess it's to power his chainsword. So I'm gonna do that in green. I might actually do his chainsword in green, too, come to think of it. While we're here, why not? On, uh, on the big flat surface of the chainsword, just want to make sure to use long strokes so we don't get any, or so we can minimize splotchiness. There we go. Oh yeah, and he's got these little armor plates on the back of his hands. I'm not sure if these are gloves. No, that's his actual hand. So it's fine there, but I'll keep it off the other one. And I got a little bit too much down there on the... There we go. So I will let this dry and then decide if I need a second coat on here or not. Currently, it's looking like I might, but once it's all dry, I'll know for sure. Uh, in any event, like I said, I'll let it dry, and then we'll come back and do the next step. Alright, we are back, and I did not do another coat. I did paint his gun in this color, though. Um, I may still go back and do another coat later, but we'll have to see about that. Uh, now, I'm going to do the skin tone. And I realized, I, I don't know if I realized, I've sort of always known that I have a propensity to just paint Caucasian skin tone on basically every model I paint. Uh... I guess just, it's just the easy one. There's usually 
a color from GW that I can just slap on there and call it a day. Uh, but we're going to try something different today. We're going to try a darker skin tone. And I don't know if this is going to work, but we're going to start with Night Questor Flesh. I know, it's not a contrast paint. Everybody, hold on. Um, so we're just going to put this on his skin, which is just his hand here, and then his face. And then over the top of this, we're going to put snake bite Leather. I'm not 100% sure if it's going to work. I mean, there's so many different skin tones that can exist, right? So I'm sure it'll look like some skin tone. Um, if I was if I was aiming at something specific, I'm not sure exactly what this combo would be used for. Um, but it at least should be a darker skin tone than I sometimes paint. Um, I really just need to sit down with like the the tans and the browns and the sort of basically not just rack art or um Reichland flesh shade and just figure out like if I want to paint a really dark skin tone what colors do I use if I want to paint like an olive skin tone what do I use that sort of thing all right and his face up here he's got a cigar in his mouth so that'll be a fun little detail to paint later but for now we're just worried about his skin And I'll paint the cigar in like dark brown or black later and then do the little ember at the end. So we can paint right over that while we're doing this. Alright, any skin on the back of his head? Oh yeah, the back of his ear. Get that. And I think it's just hair in there. Maybe there's a tiny bit of skin right here. Yeah, I guess that's skin. And then right up here under the brim of his hat there. All right. Oh, and there's a tiny little bit right in here that I missed. There we go. All right. So then we'll just give this a couple seconds to dry shouldn't need that much paint wasn't very thick uh, and then like I said we're just gonna add some snake bite leather over the top of this so I will grab a slightly larger brush not too much bigger still still pretty small but uh slightly bigger and then I'm just gonna come in and apply this over the top And I think, yeah, I think it looks pretty good as a skin tone. Um, I really should, like, I'm sure there are tutorials out there. Um, and maybe even, like, a not necessarily a miniature painting tutorial, but, like, a true artist tutorial on how to paint and highlight darker skin tones. Maybe that's what I should should look into for this. But I think for a not necessarily a first attempt, but a certainly a first attempt in a while, I think this looks pretty good. I bet there's probably a Warhammer Weekly video. Warhammer Weekly? No. That's the that's the Warhammer Age of Sigmar show. Um, I'm sure there's a Warhammer TV tutorial on darker skin tones, so maybe I'll look at that. But for now, I think that looks pretty good. So I'll let that dry, and then we'll come back and do the belts. All right, we're back. And I did a couple things uh, while everything else was drying. I looked at a picture of these guys, and I painted the belt buckle in green, and then I painted this cuff in uh, the same color as the uniform. So now we're going to do the leather. I'm going to use Garagax Sewer for that. And so this is going to be, first of all, on the boots here. And we 
go. And then basically on almost everything that isn't already painted at this point. Um, so we've got belts here on his chest. And they come down and have pouches here. Get all that in there. I need to paint that. Uh, the top of that pouch is supposed to be the color of his uniform. We'll go back and do that in a minute. But then all this is brown. And you could uh, you could vary the colors on these things um, if you wanted to. Maybe do like his, uh, I assume this is a binoculars pouch. Maybe do that in uh, in cream or something. Or just a different leather color. But for ease of painting and uh, just for the style of the battle readiness that we're going for. I'm just doing them all in the same color. And this uh, this Garagax Sewer, which is one of the newer contrast paints, it lays down so nicely. And we'll cover over any of our small mistakes we made with either the brown or the green. You do have to be careful, though, because this... If it gets on the armor or on the uniform, it will uh, completely cover. There we go. And then I'll do this part right there. And then there's just a little bit under here. So you get the idea. Um, I'm going to do that belt, finish up the, uh, the belts around his waist. And then I'm also going to do the handle of the gun here. And then the wrapping on the chainsword. Actually, and this, because I'm going to paint this as a glove. Some of the pictures have it as skin, but I'm going to paint it as a glove. And so I may actually leave the chainsword handle a different color. But regardless, I'll finish up the leather, come back, and I will tell you what all I did. And then we will move on to some metallics. All right, we are back. And we're going to do the silver now. We're going to use black metal from scale 75 for this. Just give it a good shake. And um, as I've said before, there's not really a GW comparison for this. Um, Iron Warriors is probably the closest. So I'm going to start with the grenades here. And these grenades probably could have been done in green also, but... I just wanted them in silver. And then I'm just going to get pick out a couple details here. So this little grate on, I guess that's a radio, I'm not sure. And then the clip holding it on here. And then he's got a belt buckle on this belt here. Got some little command buttons, whatever those might be, I'm not sure. And then, of course, the teeth on the chainsword. That symbol there is going to be gold, so we'll leave that for now. I'll get this. And then all this, all this detail down here at the bottom of the chainsword. You could probably do this in, in several different colors, um, but as I said before, we're going for battle ready here. Just trying to get them on the board. And uh, if you're going for a style of guard that requires a lot of dudes, no sense in spending tons of time on each individual one. All right, there we go. And then this thing here, I'm not sure what it is, but I'm going to paint it in silver. This whole assembly thing here. The cable I'm going to leave because I'll do that in black. And I'll actually do the wrapping of the chainsword in black as well. But this I'll do in silver. And of course I'll come back and get the, the other side of the 
teeth. Um, I'll do the barrel of the gun here. Down to the spot that we've painted our green. And then the trigger guard is going to be silver as soon as I finish this part. Just being careful around the skin. There we go. And then I'm just going to... All these little details on the gun can be silver. Why not? And in my heavy ordnance video, uh, I did the chevrons on the sergeant's shoulder in gold. Looking at some pictures, um, they're painted white on the store. I kind of like them in gold, though. It's not very... Uh, Maybe not accurate and probably not a, not the best thing to have bright gold insignia on the guys who the enemy would like to pick out. But, uh, you know, they're guardsmen, they're expendable. It'll be fine. And then this part here in the middle. And, of course, I'll get the other buttons on the other boot, but I'm just going to get this part. And then, I think that'll be it. Obviously, I'll go back and do the other bits that I haven't done on screen here. But uh, I'll put a cut in here. I will let all this silver dry. We will come back, do the black, just a couple little spots of black, a couple little spots of gold. And then, I think we'll put a wash on him and call him done. All right, we are back for the last couple of colors here. So first, Black Legion. I am going to do, first off, the cigar in this guy's mouth. I'm just going to do that in black first. There we go. And then the wrap on the handle of the chainsword. Try to get all the way in there. And then the other side. And then this wire connecting the chainsword to his arm. It's semi challenging to get in there around all this other stuff, but that's okay. There we go. That's good enough. So then, we're going to grab our gold. Retributor armor for this. For the go-to gold. And there's just a couple things to pick out here. So first, the symbol on the chainsword here. And I think it's on the other side as well, but we're going to check. Nope, I'm wrong. A little skull here, a symbol on his hat, there we go, and uh, while we're here, I'm just going to point out, you can see what the what long strokes do when you're applying contrast to a flat surface like this chainsword here, if it will focus on the chainsword, it really wants to focus on my hand, how about the back of my hand, no, it still wants to focus on the back of my hand, there you go, um, you can see how there's hardly any uh, I've completely forgotten the word. Uh, there's no like blemishes or anything. We just got a nice solid green color just from a contrast paint. And that's from doing long strokes so that it doesn't bunch up in any one spot. All right, and then the last bit of gold here will just be these chevrons. There we go. Alrighty, and then we just got a couple quick colors, so I'll just keep them in this same clip here. Um, I'm just going to use some matte white, and I'm going to do two things with this. First, we're not doing realistic eyes on models this small that there are going to be so many of, so I'm just going to take this white and do a little dot of this in each eye. Just so there's something there. Just 
just a little bit of life in there. It's under the brim of his hat, so it's hard to even see it, to be honest, but it's there. And then just at the end of his cigar here, I'm going to put some white in so that we can then come in with, I think I'll do Magma Draw. Magma Draw Flame. And just do a little dot on the end over that white. There we go. So now he's got his his lit cigar in his mouth. All right, so now the only thing really left to do is to let this dry. I did notice while I was just doing this that there's a strap right here that I need to put our, uh, our leather color on. But after that, I will let this all dry. We'll come back, put a wash on him, and then call him done. Alrighty, we are back. And one last thing to do, we're just going to take some Mortarian Grime and put this all over this guy. Just to help unify the colors a little bit. Knock down any satiny or semi-glossness of the contrast colors that sometimes they can have. The, uh, the metallics will still be shiny, even through this, uh, through this shade, but the, uh, I've found that the Contrast really flattens down when you put this over it. Um, these colors that we had on here weren't too bad. Um, unlike the, again, if you watched the um, heavy ordnance video, those were uh, those paints were drying very close to gloss, um, and the mortarian grime really helped to settle them back down. So there you go. Once he once he's dry, he'll be all set to go. But right about now. You should be seeing photos of him on his base. Very simple base scheme that may end up getting changed in the future. But for now, is uh, is good enough for some photos. Thank you everybody for watching. Uh, I'm not sure if there'll be any more guard videos coming after this. There might be. We'll see. Um, but if you haven't already watched the Heavy Ordnance video, please feel free to go watch that. And again, if you like this video, feel free to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you on the next one.